Today I'm going to be reacting to the experiences of another foreigner in Sweden and their culture shocks. This is seven culture shocks since moving to Sweden, an American in Sweden. So yeah, I always like to see the comparisons between America, USA and Sweden, see how they compare to people who have moved to Sweden, see what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy and things like that. But tell me what you think about these culture shocks and if you relate to any of them. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here then hello, my name is Kim and I am an American who is currently living in Sweden. If moving to another country or traveling or just Sweden in general interests you, then I would highly suggest you hit that subscribe button because I am here for you making tons of videos about what it's like to live in another country, learning about a new culture, etc, etc. It's a good time. So if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and I will see you in future videos. If you are returning, then hello and welcome back and thank you so much for joining me in another video. Before we get into today's video, seven culture shocks that I have experienced since living in Sweden, I wanted to quickly talk to you guys about a new language app that I have been using to brush up on my Swedish. If you watched my other video where I spoke Swedish for 24 hours, then you know I can get Sweden. Whoa, what is that thing? Is that like a prawn pie? A prawn cake? Well, that looks like an interesting restaurant as well. Nice design. Number one is probably the most common thing that you Swedes have heard before. It's system blogger. System blogger. The Swedish liquor store. Mm. Where I am from in America, we have tons of different liquor stores and private citizens can own their own liquor store. So we could have five different individually owned liquor stores on the same block. Here in Sweden, there is one branch of liquor store and it is owned by the government. And this liquor store is open Monday through Friday from 10 to 7 from 10, I believe, 10 to 3 on Saturdays and totally closed on Sundays. So when I moved to Sweden, I realized that you really have to plan out your drinking. <laughs> no, you have to plan out when you want to buy alcohol because in the US it's very normal to stop on your way home from work and grab a bottle of wine and have it with dinner, but if you get out of work after 7, the store's close. You can't buy it. And I guess in Sweden, um, for the most part, people end the work day earlier than 7. But yeah, in the US, uh, you can end the work day later than that. So if you wanted to stop and grab a bottle of something on the way home, you can't. <laughs> kind of going off of that, there is no refrigerated section of system blogging. So you mm. can't buy cold beer that, or cold wine, which I was extremely shocked about. Because again, if you are going over to a friend's house for dinner, you want to pick up a cold bottle of wine that's ready to drink on the way, you can't. You have to get a regular room temperature bottle of wine and then put it in the freezer or the fridge and wait for it to chill. Same thing with beer. It's very normal in the US to pick up beer on the way to a party or a barbecue, cold beers. But again, here you have to really plan out when you are gonna buy the alcohol because you have to leave time for it to get cold. Mm. And if you wanna go and buy a bottle of wine on Sunday, you're out of luck. If you wanna drink, then you have to either go out to a bar and uh, grab some drinks with friends or buy yourself at a bar, I guess. Or you would have had to prepare for that earlier in the week and you would have had to stock up. Number Yeah, so what do you think about that? Do you think it's a good system to have? What's the reason for it? Is it to discourage people drinking or to make people drink more responsibly? Do people just get around it by just being more sensible and when they buy the drink and things like that? Yeah, interesting to know that there's no refrigerated section. That one kind of shocks me. Obviously, when you go to a supermarket in the UK, there'll be a lot of alcohol on the normal shelves, but there'll always be fridges with cold beers, cold wine, cold drinks. 
Uh, quite interesting they don't have that as well, but I guess that's just the way it is. But tell me what you think. Is it a good system overall? Would you rather you could just buy alcohol any time in any place? Two is how difficult it can be to pay for things if you're not a Swedish citizen. So Sweden has made it very simple for their citizens to pay using Swish or bank ID. But if you're not a Swedish citizen, then it can be really difficult to pay for things. I have even had issues with using my American debit card in the store. Some places get extremely confused by the card and I've even had one uh, instance where she didn't understand it at the grocery store so I wasn't even able to pay for my groceries. Because something happens here where um, instead of putting my pin code in I have to sign the receipt. Mm. And I tell people Is I have an American card and you have way? to do something so no? I can sign it but this particular lady had never experienced this issue whatsoever and her manager didn't even know how to handle it so i had to leave all the groceries at the store and later my fiance came and he paid it can also be difficult to buy things online if you don't have a swedish card i know i personally can't buy anything from swedish websites because i do not have a swedish card so when you buy something on a swedish website it has to connect to your bank and I guess most times you use bank ID, but since I don't have bank ID, it tries to connect to my bank and it always, always fails. So I literally can't buy anything from any Swedish website. The third... Yeah, so tell me more of what you think about that. I guess that's very an individual experience from a foreigner that a lot of Swedish people might not experience because you'll probably have a Swedish bank account. But is it easy for a foreigner to open a bank account in Sweden? Uh, what are the restrictions? And yeah, I guess in a lot of countries, but the buying things online do require a credit or debit card from that country. Uh, but yeah, and the one with regards to when you buy something in a shop, do you always have to sign it? I know that was a case in the UK like quite a while ago, but these days you just use chip and pin or you swipe the, like the, the pay wave, I think it's called. You just wave the card in front of it or use Apple Pay and things like that. Uh, but yeah, interesting, Sweden's got a very unique system. The culture shock that I have experienced since being in Sweden is learning how long it takes to speak to a customer service representative for basically any company. I get it, it's normal to be on hold for a certain amount of time when you want to speak to an actual person when you're calling customer service, but I have never experienced the wait times like you guys have here in Sweden. It can take up to an hour and a half to speak to an actual person. This happened a few weeks ago with my fiance. Could he watch called a bank. movie. He had to speak to somebody. We waited on hold for an hour and a half. That's insane. I get it. Five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, sure, but nothing like that long. And although that's the longest wait I've experienced, I've also experienced. 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, like it's very normal to really wait to speak to somebody. So you can clean your house while you're waiting, you can shop online while you're waiting. So be prepared Only to be doing something while you're waiting to speak to a customer service representative because it takes forever. The fourth- That's interesting, yeah. I didn't really think about things like that when I, I moved to Malaysia. And sometimes I have to phone call centers and things like that. Even waiting 20 minutes, I get like frustrated. I can't actually wait that long. I wouldn't have the patience to wait an hour and a half. What's the reason for that? Is it like understaffed call centers? Is it to try and discourage people from calling these things? What's the longest you've ever had to wait? An hour and a half is really a test of patience. If they waited that long, I mean, you've got to credit them for waiting that long, actually. The culture shock that I've experienced since being in Sweden is realizing that basically no one drinks to-go coffee. So everybody sits down and really takes time to drink their coffee. I rarely see people walking around with a to-go coffee. In the U.S., it's very, very normal to stop at Starbucks drive through grab a coffee on your way to work or in the afternoon. But here in Sweden, they love to sit down and drink coffee and have a conversation and eat something sweet. They love it so much that they've even made a word for it. It's called fika. Mm. So it's very common for your friend to ask you if you want to go have a fika after work or on the weekends. It's a very, very normal thing to do. In America, I don't 
ever remember going out to coffee with my friends. It's more common to uh, go and grab a drink or go and grab something to eat, but just to sit and have a coffee and like something sweet, I honestly don't think I've ever done that. But yeah, here in Sweden, fika culture is huge. Sitting down and actually drinking coffee. I think that's more, a much more healthy relationship with coffee. is how difficult it can be to get a package delivered from Postnord. <laughs> so when you get a package delivered here, they don't actually bring the package to you. You have to go and pick the package up from Postnord, which is like the post office. So you'll get a note or a text message saying that your package has arrived and you have to come and pick it up. And sometimes you'll have to pay an extra fee if um, it's been imported from a country outside of Sweden or Europe, I'm not sure. But I know I've ordered something like from China um, and my parents have sent me something from the US and I've had to pay a fee to go and pick it up. Mm. And the is that thing like with that is like, okay, okay. Else? All right, you have to go and pick it up. It's not a huge deal. But if you don't pick it up in time, then they just send it back. And that is kind of rude, I think. So I had this issue, I sent a uh, Christmas gift to my friend and she wasn't home when it was delivered. She was visiting her parents in another city and she wound up staying there for a few weeks. And by the time she got back home, the package had been sent back. So she didn't even get it. I had to resend it and it's, it's, it's a whole thing. I don't, I don't love it. I don't know. The sixth culture shock that I have experienced. That one I think is actually quite normal. I think even in the UK or here in Malaysia, if you get something delivered and you're not there to collect it, it will go back to the post office. Uh, but if it's if you don't pick it up after a certain amount of time, it gets returned. I think it's sometimes like two weeks. So I think that's quite normal, actually. The one having to go and collect the item... Uh, all the time does seem quite interesting. Is that the case? Do you get things delivered to you? And do you always have to pay to collect things? Maybe I think that's just when the, the package is worth a certain value. Sometimes you need to pay import tax or some sort of tax. Is that what she's meaning with that, do you think? Or is it always you have to pay to collect? In Sweden is realizing how quiet it is. I like the quiet. Everywhere is so quiet. The bus, the train station, restaurants, even walking around outside, it's so quiet. People just talk quieter here than they do in the US. Like in a restaurant, it could be full of people, but it's still like quiet. Like you don't have to raise your voice at all to talk to the people at your table. And rarely there's music in restaurants, like in the US you have music going, it's loud, people are talking, sometimes you might even have a TV in the restaurant. And here it's much more quiet, much more reserved. And people just don't really make like small talk as much. When I go and get my nails done, the nail salon is dead quiet. They don't have music or anything. And the people who are getting their nails done don't talk to the nail artist. They don't talk to each other. It's like you literally go get your nails done. Tell them how you want your nails. Maybe say some things here and there, but you definitely like don't have a conversation with them or anything. And I don't, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a thing. And when you're out walking, strangers don't really say hi to each other when you pass by. Rarely someone will like smile at you, but most of the time you just walk past the person and like pretend like you don't even see them <laughs> Just like keep looking straight or like look the other way. It's very strange <laughs> Swedes are I think much more quiet and much more reserved than Americans So I guess uh, that's why that's that's what it is. I guess The seventh culture shock. Yeah, so I guess that's quite yeah, from what I've learned, that does seem to be the case, but maybe it varies, like between living in the city, maybe people will not maybe say hello so much, but when you go to the smaller towns and into the sort of more wilderness areas, people will be like, say hello and things, it's maybe similar in the UK to that, uh, that way as well, but the quietness seems like a great thing for me. As I mentioned, I've lived in Asia for the last 12, 13 years, in Shanghai, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, I don't feel like I've heard quietness for so long and I really need that quietness, man. I feel so much more peaceful and relaxed 
Here, it's just constant noise all the time. Sweden sounds like a utopia to me in that respect. Uh, tell me what you think about these culture shocks. Do you agree with all of them? Have you experienced them yourself as a Swedish person? Thanks.